the TV series The Last of Us has been a huge success. It marks a milestone in the transformation of video game into film and film into video game. The zombie storyline has a lot to do with its success. It shows that gaming is now the creative business to be reckoned with and still gaining ground. I can't see it stopping anytime soon. I think that this is going to open the floodgates to a, to a huge uh, array of video game adapted television uh, series and films. HBO's 2023 TV series, The Last of Us, is the most successful game adaptation of all time. What is it? It was originally a video game from 2013, developed by US company Naughty Dog. It tells the story of a young girl called Maria's Ellie. About Sarah. She seems to be the only person immune to an infectious fungus, the cordyceps, that turns people into zombies. It's set 20 years after the first outbreak in a post-apocalyptic United States. <laughs> young Ellie tries to make sense of the world while traveling through this hostile environment. She learns to trust Joel, a smuggler tasked with escorting her across the country. Initially emotionally distant, he slowly warms up to Ellie. They develop a father-daughter-like relationship and are the main protagonists of the game and the first season. The game was hugely popular. Part one and two are said to have made close to one billion euros in revenue. The first part was made into a TV series. The nine episodes have become HBO's most watched series internationally. You can show me where's the... Stop. The internet is full of comparison videos, examining how close the TV series is to the game. I can't. Tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her. It is really what, what we call in, in media theory a fidelity adapt adaptation. I mean, it's really shot by shot, they copied, so to speak, the game. The Last of Us is a one-player game, which makes it much easier to adapt as a TV series. The gamers play mostly Joel's perspective, and then later on, Ellie's. Perspective changes which the TV series mostly sticks to. The Last of Us game was visually powerful. Naughty Dog worked with A-list actors. The success of the game proves it was a worthwhile investment. PlayStation users voted The Last of Us the game of the decade. So are video games basically becoming films now? In the last 10, 15 years, we ha games have become more narrative. And the more narrative a game is, obviously, the better it can be adapted into an audiovisual narrative linear medium like TV series or the movies. Video games are becoming increasingly photorealistic. Assassin's Creed strives for an experience close to reality, as does Beyond Two Souls, developed by Quantic Dream. And of course, The Last of Us. In the zero, both media became pretty close. I mean, we have, um, I would say, for example, Crisis in 2007. That's one of the first games at that time with the, with the CryEngine produced. One of the first games that almost looked photorealistic, almost. So games were striving for photorealism, and obviously after a quarter century, they became rather successful with that. The Unreal Engine is one of the latest developments that come from gaming. The software developed by Epic Games creates real-time 3D visualizations. It's now very popular in current Hollywood productions. Film productions also work with photorealism. Robert Zemecki's 2007 Beowulf looks like a video game. James Cameron pushed this approach further than anyone with his two Avatar movies with graphics and motion capture. The Last of Us game mirrors the same development. The first game was remastered from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 hence the amazingly realistic facial animation.
Emotions are transported now much more convincingly, making the characters much more moving. To have this subtle play of smiles, of winks, uh, this, is, this is, of course, uh, usually not, not animated, but it is, it is captured in, in performance capture. And that's amazing what has become possible. It's really amazing how a certain uh, personal traits translate uh, through performance capture. The Last of Us successfully played with the zombie trope. Zombies stem from West African myths. The undead were translated into American pop culture via Haiti. Especially in the 1960s and 70s, zombie films were often social critiques. As illustrated by the films of American director George A. Romero, who started the zombie hype in the US, and then it spread worldwide. It's very useful for filmmakers to use zombies as a metaphor for some general anxiety in our society that we know comes from people, um, but we don't know how to control and we think could threaten us, uh, whether that's internal violence or, you know, infected people who infect us with a virus or whatever. The zombie metaphor translates well into different contexts, like the South Korean zombie movie Train to Busan that was used as a social critique. It made reference to a disastrous ferry boat accident in 2014 that claimed 300 lives. Or like in The Last of Us, where the fungus is first spread through something as harmless as flour. It cannot be seen, but it transforms humans into violent, demented creatures and ravages society. It's a scenario that resonates more than ever after the worldwide pandemic. The Last of Us has pioneered a new aesthetic and found a new way to use the zombie trope. The cordyceps is a real fungi. It overtakes ants and slowly eats them up from the inside. With The Last of Us, the interesting development or change that they make on the traditional zombie tropes is that it's a fungus that causes this, this outbreak and that the fungus is spread not uh, just from person to person, but through sort of global transport of, of, uh, of flour in, in this case. Um, that makes it seem more believable knowing what we do about how uh, COVID was spread uh, uh, internationally as well. Um, it's still not scientifically plausible. I don't think there's any scientist, serious scientist that would say, yeah, that could happen, uh, what happens in, in, in The Last of Us. But it does give us um, reference points that we think, um, oh, we can maybe imagine it. Production processes in games and films have become more and more intertwined. Take Neil Druckmann, co-president of Naughty Dog. After developing the game, he served as co-writer on the HBO series and even directed an episode. Naughty Dog is not the only company getting more involved. A growing number of companies are keen to get in on the act, like Quantic Dream in France, or Cloud Imperium, which is opening its fifth studio in Frankfurt, Germany. Slowly but surely, video games have become part of viewing culture. Since the 1980s, games have been made into films, and films into games. From Super Mario Brothers to Tomb Raider, that has not resulted in the best films. They're brothers. They're plumbers. Ah! Oh, no. Stop! If you go from games uh, into a linear medium like movies or TV series, it's easier to translate the nar narration than to translate the mechanics. Some of the most innovative films of the last decades have used and established elements that come from gaming. Um, but that was the beginning of the uh, interrelationship between these two media. And later on, we can see the more cinematic games became, the more interested movie makers, filmmakers, people who do TV series, the more interested they became into games and started to learn from games. The hit German film Run Lola Run is like a computer game translated onto the cinema screen. The film ends three times and the ending's always different. 
cult classic The Matrix by Lily and Lana Wachowski constructs an entire reality as a programmable world, a world that can be played. To the desert. With Minority Report, even Steven Spielberg played with gaming features. So we, we can see how certain visual conventions that uh, we have established in games because it helps the players to orient themselves uh, and to navigate the game space, that they have been adopted by uh, storytellers in linear, uh, uh, linear media as well. Video games are big business. In 2021, sales revenue from computer and video games exceeded 80 billion euros worldwide, compared to just under 20 billion euros in cinemas. Games have since become the most profitable business in the entertainment industry. Uh, this is a way to grow audiences. Um, you see it with The Last of Us. Uh, the series came out on HBO, and then uh, the next week after the debut, you see their game sales on the remake they just released are going up. For a lot of kind of like, bigger companies from the side by taking this transmedia approach. Um, they're able to grow their audiences and introduce their um, games and IP to more people out there who then become potential players. These days, film and TV no longer have the monopoly on epic storytelling, but also serve as a way of attracting more people to gaming. What? Fucking empty. Guys. Bill, where to? Uh, Bill, where? Anywhere but here. You made a whole ass. Come on. The game industry kind of likes to think of themselves as the young kid on the block, the new kid on the block. But hey, come on, we are making games for 50 years now. We are not that young anymore. So we have two mature uh, industries and we have creative people in both. And uh, I think uh, uh, everybody profits from each other. <laughs> The Last of Us is a turning point in collaboration between gaming and film, a development that might have consequences that aren't all good. I think the success of this show will inspire a lot of big studios to try and gobble up rights for big successful video games and try to adapt them into series or in, into films. Um, whether or not it'll be successful, uh, we'll have to see, but this sort of hunger for anything that's new, that um, has an established fan base and also a brand name, uh, which these video games, incredibly successful video games do, um, is almost insatiable. But with season two, the writers already face a much bigger challenge. The video game proved a lot less popular than part one and was heavily criticized in the gaming community. A traumatic loss and a new enemy for Ellie disrupt the story arc that worked so well in season one. So what do you think about The Last of Us? Is it a game changer? Please leave us your comments and subscribe to our channel.